Welcome one and all as we close out the week here at the Damage Forth. Me, John Arola and Brett Ehrlich, welcome back to the show. It's great to be here in the neighborhood. Um, I don't know why I just shoved a handful of M&Ms in my mouth like two seconds ago. I'm a, I've done this before. Right, mm. go live. He's How are you, John? Drinking. I'm glad that you're enjoying your breakfast as we begin our show today. Um, I'm good. We've got some interesting news, some weird news. Why Why do the things that happen happen, Brett? I love why it. are these the newses that we get? I don't know. Um, but we have that. We have garbage to throw away. We're gonna be chucking out some trash. We have a surprise change up to our uh, schedule next week. You're actually gonna be joining us for Brett-tastic Monday, actually. Yeah, so that's gonna be cool. Um, Francesca is going to be uh, taking over garbage duty on Friday. So anyway, there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. And of course, we have, you know, the Senate race is going to be determined in just a few days. So we might be in the final hundred hours or so where Herschel Walker is not a senator. So enjoy that while it lasts. Uh, how are you doing? I'm all right. I uh, ate too much last night. Woke up at Midnight, like fell asleep at like 7:45. Woke up at midnight, watched Singing in the Rain. That's noticed that wife was up. So we weird. then watched the rest of Singing in the Rain before he fell up, fell asleep again. And then, so weird. What a weird that, movie. So I love that you'd wake up in the middle of the night to watch a movie. I love more that you'd wake up in the middle of the night, begin watching a movie, and then come to the realization that your wife is also awake and doing. Oh no no no. No, I, I knew long ago that I am a loud snorer, so I frequently wake up and That's she's true. just in another room. That's true. Anyway, there's a lot going on. Not all of it in Brett's nighttime uh, cinematic excursions, also in the news. And we will be jumping into some of that in just a sec. So in advance of Kanye West declaring that he's a Nazi, Alex Jones being speechless for the first time in his life. Uh, Barack Obama making a closing argument for Raphael Warnock in the GA uh, Senate race and a whole lot more besides. Please hit the like button and share the stream. And you can send us comments, tweets, and super chats and all that, and we'll respond as we go. But with all that said, Brett, you ready to start the show? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. And uh, everyone, hold on to your butts as we launch into this. I I see I I see good things about Hitler also. The Jew I love everyone and Jewish people are not going to tell me you can love um you know us and you can love what we're doing to you with the contracts and you can love what we're you know what we're pushing with the pornography. But this guy that invented highways, invented the very microphone that I use as a musician. You can't say out loud that this person ever did anything good. And I'm done with that. I'm done with the classifications. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. How about that one? Ari Emanuel, how you like that one? Hey, Ron, you gonna do anything to fix Chicago? Why? Why, especially Hitler, not just also Hitler, especially Hitler. The rest of you have a lot of work to do to live up to the high standard that Adolf Hitler has set for the rest of humanity when he invented highways, which he didn't, when he invented microphones, which he very much didn't. None of those things happened. A lot of the bad things that he did did actually happen that for some reason got glossed over there by the person who I assume is Kanye West, although he's wearing a mask, because why wouldn't he be wearing a mask, bizarrely? The question that like is like bouncing around inside my skull is, and then they had Britney Spears like being tightly controlled because she couldn't be responsible for herself, but he's still out there. He's still incredibly wealthy and doing a little bit more damage to himself than Britney Spears ever did. So uh, look, we're gonna get to Alex Jones's response to that, because of course that was on Alex Jones's program. But Brett, what do you think? The version of what Kanye thinks he's trying to say is hate the sin, not the sinner. That's it. But like, the conclusion is these these folks like Kanye West, like Tim Pool, all of them are just stupid. That's what's so frustrating. And all the people who have like 10 or more brain cells know that like, sure, you can make that basic stupid point that no matter how evil someone is, 
you still got to love your fellow man and you can find a nice thing to say about them. It's an exaggerated version of when you're on the you're on the debate stage and the moderator says, "Can you say one nice thing about your opponent?" and you say like he's a family man. And about Hitler you say like literally Alex Jones is bending over backwards to say like, "Yeah, he had really nice fashion." <sighs> But like yes, everybody cares. already Who knows cares? that. They they have these conversations like it's the first time anyone's ever brought it up and it's because they're celebrities. It's because they're celebrities and they love being ignorant. They love saying stuff like I'm for free speech, but they they ignore all the speech that's happened before. And especially with something like the Nazis, you should know more about that than you're half Googling to say that like a Nazi invented the microphone, which isn't even true. Hilariously, like the the microphones we use now with foil were invented by an American named Mr. West, like who's still alive. And before that, it was like AT&T company invented the microphone, capacitor microphone, condenser microphone. Like he needs to, like we all know that stuff. We all we all need to hold ourselves to a higher standard of discourse. And he might he is rather than thinking that every idea he's ever come up with is brilliant. He needs to have some humility and maybe look into why the Nazis and Hitler were so evil. It's okay to just say they're evil and move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I so like, is he done now? Is this this is the worst, right? This is the low point, right? It's gotta be. It's not gonna be worse next week. How could it be? I honestly don't even know. And I don't want to exert the creative portion of my brain to try to come up with what he's going to say next week to get the in the extreme right wing to like him. That's worse than what he said now. I don't know. I hate it. I hate all of it. I'm not the only person who's not a big fan of it. Judging by the way that when they came back from a break, Alex Jones looked like this. If you take a look at the, he decided to throw on a mask, um, unmasking himself as a lizard man. And that's him being playful or whatever. But I think also he kind of didn't want his face visible during the clips that were gonna be pulled from this. In any event, let's jump now to Alex Jones had Kanye West on and he said a bunch of crazy stuff about how awesome the Nazis were. And for once, Alex Jones, while initially trying to push back against that or help Kanye push back away from the position he seemed to be staking out, he also seemed to be at a little loss for words. Take a look at this. I've said it, the most Nazi-like activities I've seen, um, and, and the Nazis, in my view, were thugs that shook people down to a lot of really bad things. But they did good things too. We're gonna stop dissing the Nazis all the time. Okay. We're, we're gonna get to that, oh my goodness. Just because you don't like one group doesn't mean the other. But look, I fine. love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. <laughs> oh man, well, I have to disagree with that. Like, no, you know, you're not really, you're not really saying that. Oh no, no, he's really saying that. And the more that you try to save him, uh, save him the more he's going to double down on it. Uh, Alex Jones, seems to have landed on wanting to make sure that coming out of this interview, at the very least, he is not considered a lover of the Nazis. He's gonna state that, take a look how that goes. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing I'm a Nazi, I'm really sick, I'm not. But I think by them falsely I, accusing I, people, some people are I, gonna become Nazis. I, I am, I am, <coughs> now what, I am. You're now what? what? Now I'm a Nazi, Ari Emanuel. I don't. It's so get, stupid. I don't get anything of the Kanye side. I don't get anything of the <laughs> Infowars side. I, and by the way, I know that like you can go and try to watch the entire interview. I'm not gonna do that because that's crazy. Maybe there would be context as to why they were using American History X as B-roll. I, I know. Don't, you know why? Yeah. Why were they doing that? Even Alex Jones, like Alex Jones, outed himself through this whole thing in a way that Tim Pool is not smart enough to. So. Tim Pool had him on because he's like, I think I can hold this all together. So did Alex Jones. They're like, I see clout, I'm gonna seek it out, that's my job. But Alex Jones reveals that like, yo dude, there are boundaries. Alex Jones who puts on frog, who says the frogs are gay and puts on lizard masks is doing it for, for entertainment value. 
And he thinks that's what Kanye's doing until the moment Kanye starts saying like, I'm a Nazi. Mm -hmm. And the reason that he's playing American History X B-roll is, and don't play it again, because it's just horrifying. It's one but of the worst scenes ever committed. The reason, it's, the, it's a scene where, where the Nazis curb stomp a black man. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to say like, hey, if you're saying the Jews are against black people, or are black people and the Jews are not, this weird stuff. You need to understand, so are the Nazis. That's what it's for. And Alex Jones knows that. Alex Jones, who thought he could walk the line effectively, thought he was doing everything right, now has has uh, revealed, it's been revealed to him that he needs to walk it more carefully because he owes a billion plus dollars. Mm -hmm. He thought this would be a fine thing to have on because Kanye's not gonna go that crazy. Maybe he's just gonna make a, an artistic point, but no. That's why the yeah. American History X B-roll's in there. Ugh. And at the same time, of course, he's hanging around every day with Nick Fuentes, who is as like I don't know what Nick Fuentes can do to convince people more that he is a racist, that he absolutely despises black people. So that that part of it, for some reason, hasn't really been a big part of the conversation around what Kanye West has been doing. And I get it, the anti-Semitism is super dangerous and all that. And hanging out with Nick Fuentes is hanging out with a massive, massive anti-Semite, like maybe even worse than Kanye West. But but also the explicit racism from Nick Fuentes. I don't. What are when they go out to dinner? I would love to know what they are talking about. I don't no, know, the whole thing's super weird. Listen, there's trigger words for, for Kanye and Tim Poole said them, which are like not all Jews, right? And uh, he's just not big enough to keep Kanye there. Alex Jones is big enough to keep Kanye there when even Alex Jones says like, not like Jews are not bad, Nazis are bad. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I'm happy that we're at this level though. Yeah. I'd rather have this anti-Semitism than pretty much any other anti-Semitism. Cause now we're in like Blues Brothers Nazis cartoonishness. Mm -hmm. We're now we're in like springtime for Hitler in Germany producers ridiculousness. And I'm fine, I'd rather have that than like this, you know what, behind the scenes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a little bit harder. Like even even Marjorie Green had to do, do like a whole nother video yesterday about how terrible Nick Fuentes was. Like it becomes untenable at a certain point. Um, and yeah, like it is interesting to see Alex Jones having to confront someone doing to him what he does to literally everyone he's ever spoken to. I Has saw Alex a face Jones ever been out crazied on his show before. I think this might be the first time. I saw in Alex Jones face the person he probably is when he's hanging out with Joe Rogan and no one's around. Mm -hmm. Like this is a ridiculous act, man. This yeah. is just an act, I'm being crazy and I'm I'm saying weird stuff just cause I like being weird. It's all a game, so I can make money and, and get an audience. Like yeah, that, and it was just like, he's like looking around like, oh my God. I finally saw a human version of Alex Jones. He, he basically cracked us, he like, you know, broke character. Yeah. And bear in mind, you know, like he he was playing, but he's the guy who shouted at the what Channel Five guy, "I killed him! I killed the kids! I killed every one of them!" He went off on that whole rant about how he killed them and everything, and yet he kept it together better than Kanye West. It is now impossible to pretend that Kanye West is just an independent thinker or whatever. Uh, even the GOP House Judiciary Twitter account d finally deleted their Kanye Elon Trump tweet. It took until this, by the way, all of the previous stuff with Nick Fuentes and racism and anti Semitism. That wasn't enough, but they did finally do it. And uh, I believe they did it actually before. Kanye West, who gave his phone to Alex Jones and Nick Fuentes to tweet from when they're already banned or whatever, and then decided to one up that by tweeting out an image of a swastika photoshopped inside of a Star of David. And that at long last was too much for Elon Musk. Elon Musk did suspend Kanye West's Twitter account. I, I haven't heard anything about like a permanent ban. I'm assuming this will be relatively permanent. But Musk said about the suspension, I tried my best. Despite that, he again violated our rule against incitement to violence. Account will be suspended. 
just clarifying that his account is being suspended for incitement to violence, not an unflattering pick of me being hosted by Ari. Frankly, I found this fix to be helpful motivation to lose weight. Haha, <laughs> he's very funny. Anyway, um, so Kanye West is now done. We have found a line that you can't cross. Comedy might be legal, but that stuff, I guess, is not on Twitter. Comedy is illegal because people did very funny stuff, which is pretend to be Elon Musk and say stupid crap, and he banned them. Yep. So comedy's not legal. Free speech absolutism is out the window. I think we all see that. So anyone who said, "Oh, the solution to billionaires owning Twitter is another billionaire owning Twitter," because this is the billionaire you know and is a good one and is all free speech absolutism. No, he's not. And then specifically, Ben Shapiro said something to the effect of, "Like, at least when Elon, like Elon Musk is banning people and Jack from Twitter banned people, but at least Elon Musk is very clear and straightforward and transparent as to why." That goes out the window here because. Mm -hmm. It didn't look like anything in my from what I've seen in the tweets that Kanye got banned for. It didn't seem like he was expressly saying, "Go get him." Yeah, exactly. because if that's the situation, that imagery, that like um, that stuff that Alex Jones always does, where it's like I'm not explicitly saying go kill the people. I'm just pointing out some stuff and conveniently putting words together that that get up to that line, but don't cross it. That's what Kanye did. So well, and. So Elon's being just as obtuse as Jack Dorsey was in their eyes. Well, and I think I'm really glad that you pointed that out because what is actually going on is quite different from what Elon Musk, who is doing the right thing for once, wants you to believe he's doing. So what he is actually doing is agreeing with the prior policy that some stuff just can't be born, okay? It may not explicitly be calling for violence. But you clearly can't have it on a platform that anyone's gonna wanna be on, and more importantly, advertisers are gonna wanna advertise on. So he's agreeing with that, but he can't publicly agree with that. So he has to pretend that his stated standard, that you have to be breaking the law or inciting violence, is being violated, even though it isn't. I agree with what he's doing. Kanye West should be suspended for what he tweeted. But we should also identify that Elon Musk is being really weaselly about why he's actually banning him, probably to avoid having to do it to other people. He's getting rid of Kanye West for tweeting the swastika or whatever. He does not want to have a standing policy where anyone who does this stuff gets banned. Only the stuff that rises to the level that it puts pressure on him. And that's the truly weaselly thing about this. By yep. the way, also Kanye West, I guess it's been announced is not gonna be buying Parler now, which is the thing that was gonna happen, I guess. I, don't. I, I just need to point out this dynamic at play with people on the right, especially at a time when the World Cup's going on. And you can see games where a bunch of soccer players are like, "Oh my God, I, it was fouled. And you look at the replay and nothing happened. That is right wingers in relation to media, social media, all of that. They pretend they've been fouled in this very blatant and obvious way. They never were. They never are. It is all an act so that they can get a freebie. And the freebie, yeah. not a penalty kick, not the ball. The freebie is to start a company or buy a company, take over a company and get a leg up with yeah. these new endeavors. They're all doing it for media play. Ben Shapiro got a bunch of investments to do a rival to, De to Disney. Elon Musk wants to just take over Twitter so he can run it the same way it was run before, right? That's what's happening and have an income stream. He just sucks at business sometimes and in this specific way, so it's not panning out right away. But yeah. they all are gonna do the same thing they criticize people for. They're just relying on their branding to be strong enough that they the, the, the people who follow them don't catch on to what they're actually doing. Uh, and finally, I say on this, this is not not that Elon Musk is going to see this or that he's capable of learning, but this is a reminder that, and this goes into what you were said about them crying that they're being canceled or silenced or whatever. Like what they implied they were their free speech rights were being violated for was not the actual thing they were being violated about. There's a classic tweet I can't find it, but it's like, you know, my my free speech rights have been violated because I'm a right winger. And someone's like, oh, what what were you tweeting about? Like how taxes should be low? No, were you tweeting about how we have to um, reconsider immigration law? No, then what was it for? You know what it was for. It's for shouting racial slurs and anti-Semitism, that's what it is. It's not that they were saying something about the distribution of power, or some policy thing or some ideological thing. 
It's the stuff everybody actually doesn't believe should be there. Well, on a, on a site that's gonna actually be civil, that people are gonna wanna actually advertise on. That stuff is not acceptable. That's the stuff that's getting you banned or suspended, okay? Not policy concerns. Anyway, with that said, we need to move now to, um, those are all Kanye's problems. Let's move now to the other guy. Alex Jones is filing for personal bankruptcy. He's filed for other forms of bankruptcy. I guess he's making it official in his personal life now. That happened just earlier today. In the filing, he says that he owes between one, he owns between one million and ten million dollars of assets, with between one and ten billion dollars of liabilities. His free speech systems is also mentioned in the lawsuit that filed for bankruptcy about six months ago. All of this now comes after he was ordered to pay almost one point five billion dollars in damages for falsely claiming repeatedly that the Sandy Hook mass shooting was hoax and that the families were in on it and they were hounded across the country. So his what he owes right now is constituted of these elements. A Connecticut jury order him to pay very close to $1 billion in a defamation lawsuit in October. In mid November, judge ordered him to pay an additional nearly half a billion dollars for making false statements. He also owes like $50 million from a Texas lawsuit, which at the time seemed like a big penalty until the other one started to drop. And so I don't know who actually believes that he only has between one and $10 million of assets. We know that he's sold hundreds of millions of dollars of boner pills and stuff like that. But this is clearly an attempt to get out of paying what he owes. All right, what do you think? I think the reason that he can't list boner pills on his assets column is because like boner pills are priceless. So you can't, they don't fit into a line item. What the service that they give to people who can't use their wieners um, and flock by the millions to, to Alex Jones. Like you can't put a price on that. So I understand that as a person who feels who does his own taxes sometimes using the quicken. Um, but I'm I'm just so glad there are so many um, institutional aids and lifelines for people like Alex Jones uh, when multiple juries of his peers have said, oh no, that was bad. You should pay a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just glad yeah. that he has a life. I, I hope it works out for him. And uh, I hope that this uh, that, that he only loses a uh, hundred million dollars out of the billions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see if it ends up happening. I mean, it's crazy the, the idea that he, that this is gonna be dragged out for literally years. He's still gonna be flying around on a personal jet. He's still gonna be pulling in millions of dollars in ad revenue every month. It's really weird how the system works. It's really a microcosm of like the entire an allegory for the entire for much of the entire economy, mm-hmm. where it's like people who are just don't have the actual assets are doing things that are immoral. A reasonable person would conclude that what they're doing is immoral. No real person understands the economics behind it, but somehow these people who haven't really earned anything are flying around in jets. Doing the same stuff people convicted them of doing. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, it is weird that, like, he looks better today. He's got a multi billion dollar lawsuit. He's filing bankruptcy, and he looks like he's got his stuff more together than Kanye West. Anyway, with that said, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, a major update on the special master. Uh, that was overseeing the Mar-a-Lago scandal. We'll have all the details on that and more after this. Hey, of what? <laughs> and on an 18th birthday, he found out it wasn't his. Oh no, not today. Anyway, we got. I, I love somebody in the chat yesterday was like Yadolf Hitler. <laughs> it was my favorite thing. <laughs> Yadolf Hitler is a great thing. That is great, okay, and we'll talk about it later. First though, the news, let's jump into this. The special master is dead. Not really, it's just gone and won't affect the process anymore. Thanks to an appeals court that says that the special master should never have been appointed by Judge Eileen Cannon to overlook the investigation into the stolen documents of Mar-a-Lago and that the FBI can use all of those documents. Now there's little wrinkles that we need to dive into here. Um, But this is the US Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, which is reversing a Florida federal judge's ruling that is Eileen Cannon, who again, I can't remind you enough, was appointed by Donald Trump 
and decided in a way that makes no sense to me. And it turns out makes no sense to that appeals court to set up this process to slow down and potentially protect Donald Trump. So Chief Judge William Pryor, Circuit Judges Andrew Brasher and Britt Grant wrote that Judge Cannon never had the authority to hear a civil case Mr. Trump filed with the aim of stopping those documents from being used by the DOJ and the FBI. The fact that Mr. Trump was once president of the US could have no bearing on their interpretation of the law according to the judges. Creating a special exception for Mr. Trump because of the job he once held, quote, would defy our nation's foundational principle that our law applies to all without regard to numbers, wealth, or rank, which I love as a hypothetical founding principle that has very, very rarely ever been demonstrated in our legal system. But sure, it's aspirational. They say the law is clear. We cannot write a rule that allows any subject of a search warrant to block government investigations after the execution of the warrant, nor can we write a rule that allows only former presidents to do so. Either approach would be a radical reordering of our case law, limiting the federal court's involvement in criminal investigations, and both would violate bedrock separation of powers limitations. And so that whole thing is done, I guess. Bear in mind, there is one week in which Donald Trump can appeal this. Notably, they gave him less time to appeal than they generally do. I like that as a nice little touch. And in theory, he could appeal this to the Supreme Court. And he did put one third of the Supreme Court into their positions, and I despise them. But that said, I do have to acknowledge that they have not necessarily ruled in Trump's favor on things that are exclusively to the benefit of Donald Trump. They have ruled in biased ways. In the way that the right wing would want. But in terms of protecting Trump specifically, they have not necessarily always shown a predisposition to do that. And so if they even take up this appeal, I'm not sure that they're likely to actually rule on his side. But Brett, what do you think? I think this is federalism at play, working as it should. There are even within one branch of government, there are checks and balances. But and this is this is a good reminder. There are many times when we look at, for example, voter fraud allegations from the Trump camp. We say that even Trump appointed judges have concluded, all of them basically, that Trump has no case. So regardless of who appointed them, they still can't find a way to kind of do a solid back to the guy that appointed them. But there are still crazy pants judges out there who got through and actually were able to make this weird special wizard of the documents that uh, that now thankfully has themselves magically disappeared. Yeah, yeah, well, um, we'll see what happens. We got one week, it just seems cra- like he did it, right? Yeah, he stole he the it. documents, he went he home, the only thing. question, well, go ahead. Like he did it, we know that he did it. We've known that he did it for months. We know that he did it, we know that he knows that he couldn't do it. We know that he knows that he was covering it up when he covered it up. It's all out there. I don't know why we need to just like sit on the edge of our seat wondering what's gonna happen. He definitely did it, it's definitely illegal. There should be consequences for that. The saddest secret um, that now seems like it's out is the, the track to becoming a judge or even a district attorney, many of these things you run for that seem like they should be earned. A lot of people are bad at the job itself. So mm-hmm. like, regardless of what you think of like the current district attorney in Los Angeles, George Gascon, he's never tried a case. Now I say that to you and you're like, what the hell? How is the district attorney of the second largest city in America never been an attorney to try a case? Shouldn't he have some experience? No. Judges also, judges get chosen because A, frequently, some of them are really good judges, but some get chosen because they're bad lawyers, but they know how to sniff out a lifelong opportunity for employment. And so they just kowtow to these giant institutions that have gotten millions and millions of dollars funneled into them to turn the the per, person who just got out of law school into someone who will be the wildly partisan appointee of a um, of a, a, a bat ass crazy president. Can I become a judge? Yes, I have never tried a case. Yes, should I can. try to become a judge? I I think I would be just fair, hard but fair. Anyway, um, yeah. 
I just I want to know. I know, like so we don't have the a special master read. now. The last have, sentence we, back. What's that? Hard but fair. Can we have the court reporter read that back, John? Strike it from the record. Uh, it was disgusting. Okay, so in case you're uh, keeping score, we don't have a special master anymore, but now we do have a special counsel that we didn't have when the special master was appointed, and one of these people maybe will do the job that uh, the DOJ refuses to do. Okay, with that said, let's jump into a little bit more fun, starting with this video. Since the last time I was here, <laughs> since the last time I was here, Mr. Walker has been talking about issues that are of great importance to the people of Georgia, like whether it's better to be a vampire or a werewolf. This is a debate that I must confess I once had myself. <laughs> when I was seven. <laughs> then I grew up. So President, uh, former President Barack Obama is campaigning in the final days of the Georgia runoff, trying to get Raphael Warnick uh, elected to uh, a second term. And you got to give it to him. Like there were a lot of things that he did as president I didn't like, and a lot more that he could have done, and things he could have done since he was last president. But when he's speaking, there there is a, there is a likable thing about him that few politicians have. Brad, I don't know. Is this the sort of thing that that appeals to you, or are you above this? Uh, that what that appeals to me? Yeah, I like watching Barack Obama speak. I really enjoy having a high communication politician. Unfortunately, it reminds me that um, that sadly there aren't that many of those in the Democratic Party anymore. It is a lot of folks that just did what they were told in a way that didn't alienate anyone in power in the, in the Democratic Party. And then they rose to the top that way frequently because they're good at raising money and not, ad, not good at advocating for what people actually want. Yeah. Um, and they're not good at inspiring people. And and former President Barack Obama is really good at all of that stuff. Yeah, well, we've got a little bit more fun from him. Take a look at this. Since the last time I was here, apparently he also claimed that he used to let me beat him at basketball. But then he admitted that we've never actually met. So I guess this was more of a imaginary whooping. That I laid on him. Yeah, so that that's like thrown as like a funny applause line or whatever, but it really does get to that. Yeah, Herschel Walker is a guy who just routinely, casually tells insane lies and can't remember the lies he's told, so he undercuts himself. It, like to make a claim that you not only have ever met the president, but you apparently semi routinely hang out with him casually and socially. That you play sports together, and then to say I obviously beat the president, I let him beat me, but I easily could have been like that is spinning so much needless dishonesty to then unravel it just by admitting at some point that yeah no I never actually met him. So add that to the list of the many lies he's told, and this is by far not one of the most dangerous. This isn't about you know like want to, like trying to kill a person or anything, but it's just such a weird thing to throw out there. Historically speaking, if all other things being equal, there's no way that this should be close. And I'm not talking about Warnock winning. I'm talking about the Republican Senate candidate should whoop the Democratic Senate candidate in Georgia. Yeah. But because Donald Trump, A, needs to choose the successor himself, B, thinks that that person just needs to be a celebrity. But very importantly, C will never choose anyone even remotely as gifted at communication as himself. They have chosen what seems to be the dumbest, worst, least functioning, most hypocritical candidate ever in the history of this iteration of the Republican Party. This is a guy who says he's anti abortion. Seems to conveniently forget that he has bought a bunch of them. And in addition to making up these fake games of basketball with President Obama, like that is 
That's creepy weird. And not to mention, has admitted, and according to the IRS, according to things I've read, he does not live in the state he seeks to represent. And that's not like one of those normal attacks. It's like, oh, you spend all your time in DC nowadays. Like, no, he actually lives in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. He was campaigning initially from his home in Texas. He wasn't even doing a good job. Like, Dr. Oz tried. He tried to do the thing that you normally do, which is like kind of like like move there, I guess, right before whatever, but like pretend that you're there. He didn't even do that. And by the way, I want to contrast what you're seeing from Obama, where he's he's there and he's campaigning, he's raising money, he's trying to get people excited to vote. Uh, another former president is instead going to be holding a tele rally for Herschel Walker, but won't campaign in person because he has been asked not to by the Walker campaign. And that is the most lucid like, <laughs> like thinking of the Walker campaign so far. They don't get much, but they get that having Donald Trump on the ground wouldn't be good for them. Uh, we've already broken down earlier this week why I think the interesting part is not that they asked Trump not to go. The interesting part is trying to figure out exactly why he's not going anyway. Um, and I don't think it says much good about Walker's chances. But we do know as we launch towards the final days, um, almost $80 million was spent on TV ads, not in the Senate race, in the four week Senate runoff. Get money out of politics, that is insane. And by the way, as of uh, the final polling that we're likely to get, 52% of likely voters say they plan to support Raphael Warnick. 48% are picking Walker. That's because about 99% of Democrats are supporting Warnick. 95% of Republicans are backing Walker. And yes, independents are breaking towards the Democrats, 6136, but they're not a very large part of the electorate, just 17%. And that's in fact down from the exit polls from the first race. I mean, it's a four point race. And only one in 20 Republicans is not gonna back Walker, despite fill in a scandal. Heaps and mounds of things that individually would make this person unacceptable. It has convinced virtually no Republicans to choose the Democrat instead. Any final yeah. thoughts, Brett? Nope, any, any more thinking about this story and I will literally start crying. <laughs> Probably. You know what? In fact, before we go to our break, let's let's play this last video and leave people a little bit fired up. If you put everything you've got in the next few days, if you vote, if you get your friends to vote and your neighbors to vote, if you do all that, not only will we reelect Raphael Warnock, not only will we keep Georgia and America on a path to a better future. But we will be setting an example for a four-year-old right here and laying a foundation for him to build on. And that one-year-old over there, and I know I saw a three-month-old here, they're watching right now to see if we're going to get tired. And I'm going to tell them right now, we're not going to be tired. We're going to bring it on home. Let's make this happen, Georgia. I love you. God bless you. God help us if they choose Herschel Walker. Anyway, we're gonna go to our break. When we come back, some more terrible news and then more ridiculous news both after this. Uh, Galfar says three words, John, dial of destiny. Yeah, we actually live reacted to that trailer on the preport this morning. Um, I'm gonna hopefully get Brett's thoughts at some point, but we don't have time right now. We gotta talk news, so let's jump into this. An employee at a Starbucks has been suspended because of the way they labeled the cup for a black customer. They wrote monkey on it. You can see a picture here. Because the thing about doing this particular sort of thing is that it's written down and you can't deny that you did it because it's written down. So the, the actual customer's name is Monique. Responded to this saying, just my heart just drops. It was one of those in the moment things where your heart just drops and you're just like, what? She says that she initially got the cup and just engaged with a barista, 
a guy to try to get to fix the drink, which they had also made incorrectly, by the way. That's a much more minor issue. He was immediately very combative and argumentative. I don't know that exact situation. I don't know if he knew about the monkey thing written on it, but um, she eventually says, why am I the only black person in the store and monkey is written on my cup? At that point, he just shrugs and told her it was a mistake, which I agree in a metaphysical way, it was a mistake. Was it the sort of mistake that he's asserting it was? I don't know, we're gonna get to the consequences, but Brett, what do you think? As a person named Brett, whose name is frequently misheard as Brent, Greg, Brant, Brant, um, Brad. When my name appears wrong on the Starbucks cup, it usually is still a name. Yes. It's not another, like a word. It's not a word, it's a name. And so that I think for me, as I try to just dole out benefits of doubt, uh, that's the, that's the line it crosses for me. Because either way, like you have to look down and type in the name, and when you do that, you get a chance to like have. Wait a minute, maybe I misheard this. Yeah, but it seems like you're associating plus getting it wrong plus being combative as opposed to like. What anyone, if anyone who wasn't wildly racist made that mistake, I would argue they would be like, "Oh my God!" Here, here are my heartfelt apologies. That was wildly inappropriate. Yep. I am so sorry, and here's twenty dollars of my own money for Starbucks gift cards because that was horrible. Not, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah like yeah. you could, you could miss. I bet they miss here and misprint names all the time. But as you say, they're they're names, and if. Like, how could you be so not conscious of, like, like if they were to mishear my name and write J or something, that's one thing. But like, I'm Italian. If they wrote Luigi or something, you might have thought you heard Luigi or whatever. But like, maybe check or something. Like, they didn't put Monica. You know, if they'd done that, maybe they misheard. Maybe the the espresso machine is going off. They don't know. You have to consciously type in an animal species instead of a human name. Anyway, this is consequential. Starbucks corporate representative confirmed that the incident did actually happen. They did say though that the store was a franchise. I don't care and I don't know why anyone would. Aren't yeah. most of them? I don't know, who cares? I know that they're gonna say that, I don't care. That yeah, that's my matter. favorite part of the story. Don't they they're like training from the franchise? Listen, and the name of it's like impeccable foods. It's like impeccable, brands, impeccable. Yeah. definitely impeccable today. There's some pecs, yeah. There. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, they said they've investigated the incident. They believe their employee mistakenly labeled your cup in this way. Regardless, I understand the hurt and frustration this has caused you. I don't understand it to the extent where I don't put in that BS cover for the employee. I'm still gonna do that, but I I, I understand it on some level. So the employee has been suspended. And going forward, you will not be able to enter the word monkey into their system company wide as a possible name for an order. They said that there are other terms that you can't use, but they're not gonna tell us which. Oh what my God, yeah, I knew. Consequence? That's, a, that's a favorite thing of high school kids is to say, my name is Seymour Butts. And I'm sure that happens a lot, but I like I think the be best thing to do for Starbucks is honestly to give Monique a a thousand dollar gift card to like Caribou Coffee, to, to some rival chain, place. yeah, so that the money doesn't come back, that it costs them a customer and benefits a rival. I think that's exactly what start like. And how does that hurt Starbucks to do? It's so hurtful. It's more hurt. I mean, it's already hurtful. It adds to the hurtfulness. If the corporation shows up and does something as insulting as that, to be like, well, actually, you should take it up with impeccable foods yeah. because you understand the way franchising works, right? Yeah, and 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 that and they couldn't just do one cover thing. It's like we totally understand. Our heart goes out to you, but it wasn't us; it was them. And also, they didn't do it on purpose. I get that you're offended, even though even though they didn't do it on purpose. So there's kind of something wrong with you, but we totally understand. Like this is how not to write an apology. Anyway, and it's, by the way, it's Starbucks. I thought they went through that period where they were gonna be having conversations about racial justice and everybody had been trained and everything. How's that working out? Anyway, with that said, they, there's been a suspension. 
I, I, you know, I, I would be curious to see what Monique thinks about these consequences. Maybe we can figure that out. Anyway, for now, we're gonna move to. Uh, <laughs> did you have another thought? Really fast. <laughs> All the people in chat are giving fake names like Amanda Hug and Kiss, Bill McCracken. People are gonna we be going to Starbucks and seeing all of the different things that they can get through the system. My favorite um, real name that seems like a fake name is Suckdith Punjastical. That was like the name of a person that someone knew in college, and it was, and it, they named everything after him in in honor of like the peril yeah. of being like, no, this is my actual name. Fat guy named Tiny says, uh, it's Mr. Jazz, first name Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is serious. It was a racial slur, everyone. Please. Anyway, there have been consequences at the very least. We don't often have that, so that's good. Let's turn now from very that serious news to absolute ridiculous, a mockery of the news, starting with this. Um, and this is this is bad for women too, because uh, heterosexual yeah. women want men to be healthy and uh, happy, and women want to be satisfied sexually. And if men are um, are um, well, if their health is in peril, then our health is in peril too, which is really important for the kind of work that I do. Okay, so they're talking once again about uh, falling sperm counts internationally on Tucker Carlson's show. It is an actual thing that is actually happening for actual reasons. With actual consequences, forget all of that. You should be worried about your sperm count falling because then women won't be sexually satisfied for some reason, which makes perfect sense to people who've literally never had sex, I guess. Anyway, um, a friend of the show recently appeared, um, uh, Kate uh, Abugazale. She points out, I can confirm that is not that sperm is not why women become sexually uh, satisfied. But Tucker Carlson takes that with his blank face, no follow up. This is what you should all be worried about, guys. Now he does have a solution. I don't, I have to be fair. So I wanna remind you there's a solution to these problems. Let's roll that. It's, it's interesting, there's a kind of schism actually on right wing Twitter about you're either sunning your balls or you're freezing your balls. My name on Twitter is Benjamin Braddock. I'm a right wing bro scientist. And yes, I tan my balls. Yes, there there is a schism between those who think that you should tan your balls or freeze them. I would guess as a not expert that both of those are contributing factors to sperm count declines. I think both of those will be bad for your sperm count. Maybe equally, maybe do both like an icy hot situation. I don't know, but Brett, what do you think? There are lower sperm counts now than there were 50 years ago. Now, 50 years ago, Tucker Carlson did not have a show on Fox. Now he does have a show on Fox. <laughs> I'm seeing a connection. <laughs> also, like, listen, I understand that women want men to have higher sperm counts, especially in the married variety, because, like, they, you know, because the lower the sperm count, the more time she has to have sex with her husband to get pregnant, and no wife enjoys that, in my experience. Um, <laughs> In my direct recent experience, anyway, uh, and and, and the, yeah, the last thing is like I think the sperm counts might be, and this is not scientific. They're down because we have so much porn that we're always emptying half full tanks. Oh my God, you are as bad as Tucker Carlson. Okay, look, the reason that we're bringing this up again is because for once, I and Tucker Carlson agree on a problem. This does seem to be a problem. It's not the apocalypse they're saying, according to the actual scientists who actually talked to them. But what frustrates me so much about the coverage of this is he keeps talking about this topic. And like with everything else wrapped up in his like like millimeter thick faux populism, he then comes to all the wrong conclusions or at the very least wants you to. So you should be thinking constantly about your falling sperm counts, but let's never ever ever do anything to stop it. Because what's actually causing this is a variety of different things, the ones that seem controllable, is stopping so many environmental toxins being pumped into the environment and into our systems. But to stop that, you would have to infringe on the freedom of corporations. Tucker Carlson does not want you to ever do that. So you should be constantly worried about your falling sperm count. Now you should be worried, not just because you might not be able to have kids, but because somehow you won't be able to pleasure a woman or something. People who've experienced vasectomies, I guess, will be shocked to find this out. 
Um, but don't ever do anything that might infringe on a corporation, even if it could save all of our sperm counts. Final thought goes to you. No, we're out of time, John. We are. Let's do it. We are out of time. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. Uh, okay, more show to come. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.